All right, my first question of today is have you guys bought the dip? Literally, this tweet came only three minutes after the lowest point that Bitcoin hit today. And that low point was at like 47 point something thousand. It is crazy how low we went. But today, I don't want to focus on that, right? Just put down below whether or not you bought the dip. Today, I want to focus mostly on XRP. And I know it's the coin I focus on quite often. And I know there's a couple of other things here at the top that we're also going to be covering. But this coin is breaking some limits here again. And the reason I'm saying that is because a lot of people have been negative about this coin today, mostly because of some stuff we'll see in just a second. But then again, the lawsuit has proven a couple of really positive things again. And man, it is so divided and so crazy that today I definitely need to update you guys about that. Uh, but make sure you press the like button if you want to help the channel grow. I think it helps a ton. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subs within, you know, I guess before June. I'm not sure if we can make that, but all the help is appreciated, and I think this is a little bit skewed, alright? I don't think this is actually possible uh, to go <laughs> you know, to go this far. We're just kind of looking at the top two things here, basically. Maybe three, maybe we'll hit that. I'm hoping that we hit it before June, but again, I'm not too sure. And I sold my soul and made an account on TikTok, and if you have that, go follow me over there. I'm going to try, share a couple of updates. Hey, Dogecoin. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue this, really. If you have any tips, let me know. Uh, let's go on. First off, 58 million XRP moved by Ripple, its ODO partner and biggest exchange, Binance. Whale Alert Crypto Tracker has detected that over the past 24 hours, Ripple and a few more major crypto companies have shifted almost 60 million XRP. Yes, it's another day, another huge amount of transactions, which is interesting because most people were focused on this whole MoneyGram ordeal because, yes, MoneyGram has suspended the trading on Ripple, citing the SEC lawsuit as the cause, basically. Global money transfer service MoneyGram says it has changed its relationship with blockchain payments from Ripple amid the latter's litigation with the SEC. According to MoneyGram's quarterly outlook, the company is not planning for any benefit from Ripple market development fees for the first quarter of 2021. MoneyGram said it had a more than $12 million net expense benefit from Ripple in the same quarter last year. And as you can see here, Ripple dished by MoneyGram over SEC lawsuit. It's been everywhere around the internet and people said, well, because this has now happened, there's no question XRP has gone to zero. Of course, when I see that, I always laugh because, <laughs> you know, people are always saying that, but it never really goes to zero. And yeah. A lot of exchanges are still sending it around, or at least a lot of people are putting it there. It might, theoretically speaking, be people depositing um, depositing on there because they want to sell it, but I don't actually think so, right? For example, in October 2019, Ripple invested an undisclosed amount of funds into Bitso, and Senior Vice President of the Product, Ashish Birla, joined the board of directors of Bitso. They got the connections over there. It could be a lot going on, but... You know, this connection and this thought does make you wonder exactly what Ripple is planning to do with all these exchanges. Since Ripple is a for-profit company, I do sometimes wonder exactly if all of these ventures are really for Ripple or mostly for XRP, and that I still do not yet know. However, again, all these transfers here, you can't really tell exactly what's happening. You could say, okay, it is a shift of about $10 million from Binance to Unknown Wallet. That means one person is taking money out from Binance onto a wallet, meaning they want to hold it. But here from the title, it says it is actually to Huobi, uh, and the wallet is just not known by Whale Alerts algorithm, but people do know it, which again would say, I would personally think it's just somebody either changing their money from one exchange to another because they feel safer over there. Maybe this is a you know, Chinese person, for example, who likes Huobi more because it's Asian in Binance, I guess, is more so. Uh, even though it's also Asian, it's actually more so in Europe nowadays rather than Huobi. Maybe they want to actually exchange it to one of their own pairs and it's actually available over there. Could be a lot of different things or they just like to store it over there more. Like there's literally countless amount of options which uh, could be present as of this time. And the whole money grammar deal, yeah, is it really a bad thing? Again, debatable. Did we really benefit from all of this? Not too much. Not really too much, if you're asking me, to be honest. I'm also seeing here at the side, Ripple has proof. SEC failed to warn exchanges about XRP's security status. Okay, Ripple's accusing the SEC of failing to warn exchanges about XRP's security status as late as in 2019. 
Wait, so Ripple is accusing the SEC of failing to warn exchanges about XRP security status as late as 2019? I think what that refers to from the title alone is actually that the SEC had thought about XRP being a security for a long time, yet they only acted in 2020. So why didn't they warn them a couple of months in advance then to say, hey, we, you know, we might sue them, or at least that might be a security, you should worry up, or this is a security or something along those lines, and they never did. During today's pre-trial, which by the way, everybody on YouTube has already been talking about, I'm kind of going to assume you already saw it a little bit. If you didn't though, just wait here, we'll cover most of the important parts that you're going to need in uh, just a little second. But let's quickly move on here. Where was it now? During today's pre-trial, lawyer Matthew Solomon of Cleary Gottlieb, who represents Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse, claimed that the SEC had failed to warn market actors, including exchanges, about XRP security status in numerous discussions that took place in 2019 and earlier. We've already taken some discovery on the SEC, uh, SEC which revealed that the SEC and Exchange Commission uh, that's that's what SEC stands for, never mind, was having discussions with ultra-sophisticated market actors, including exchanges, and not, apparently, telling those actors that it believed XRP was a security or an investment contract as late as 2019. And again, as this case moves forward, these facts will come to light, and it will be clear that XRP cannot establish and will not establish that XRP is a security. Yeah, and uh, actually, the end result of the lawsuit start was basically that Ripple executives want to dismiss the suit, so that is actually on the accounts of Brad Gollinghouse and Chris Larson only, not as uh, not Ripple as a company, but as you've seen before, they're being sued kind of separately in the sense that they're going after Brad Gollinghouse, they're going after Chris Larson, both for different things, and they're going after Ripple for another different thing, right? And then Chris Larson, Brad Gollinghouse, and Ripple all have different lawyers, uh, and a lot of them actually. This first hearing only had one of those lawyers, by the way, because that's usually how it goes, I think always actually. And for Brad Gollinghouse and Chris Larson, they're trying to dismiss the suit, or basically drop it. Gollinghouse has already filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit filed by the SEC, according to Solomon. The attorney denies that the top executive was aiding and abetting Ripple's sales and accus... Uh, an accus... Wait, how do I pronounce that? An accusation... Yeah, there we go. An accusation that is at the heart of the SEC's amended lawsuit while insisting that his client didn't know that XRP could potentially be classified as an investment contract. Quote, the SEC's allegations establish the opposite of what they purport to do. Mr. Gullinghouse did not know or recklessly disregard that XRP could have been or was an investment contract, which I believe is a little bit untrue. Um, of course, Gullinghouse did think about the option of it, so he did recklessly disregard it to some degree, as he could have thought about it himself, and he, he most likely, you know, ha it has crossed his mind. However, he does be not believe it is actually an investment contract is what they're claiming, which, of course, I would claim too. So from that perspective, he is in his right mind to say that, as, you know, the whole question that the SEC wants to get light on is, did Ripple's uh, executives did this on purpose? If they did, then their fine or sentence is going to be severe. If they did it in, in terms of negligence or even negligence they didn't even see, like, I'm not trying to say negligence where, oh, you could have seen it, but you didn't. No, I'm talking about you really just firmly believed otherwise, right? So that's, again, negligence, but it's a little bit different. Just a, a change in belief, basically, because it's something so new, where you just thought the rules were different and the SEC wants to build new rules that are not according to yours, but you couldn't have known, basically. That's basically what I think that this will turn out to. The SEC's allegations establish the opposite of what they purport to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, keep it in mind. Ripple's former CEO, Chris Larson, is represented by Paul Weiss's Martin Flimenbaum, who mentions that his client also wants to raise the same issue in his motion to dismiss. And we earlier said the amended suit came actually because they were already afraid that without enough facts, Brad Gollinghouse and Chris Larson were going to try to dismiss the suit. But now, even though the amended amendment came through, they... Yeah, they still pulled out the same card by trying to dismiss. And last but not least, the SEC prepares to strike Ripple's defense. The SEC, which is represented by Jorge Gerardo Tenreiro, John Daniels, and others, maintains that XRP was offered and sold as an investment contract by the company, and the regulator alerted federal judge Analicia Torres that it was very likely to file a motion to strike Ripple's defense. In response, Ripple lawyer Andrew J. Cernacy accused the agency of trying to cut off discovery which is basically the phase where they discover all the facts because they wanted to strike earlier than that, most likely. 
All right, moving on, let's see. Uh, this article here, we've actually explained everything you need to know already, I think, about the whole uh, situation. By the way, go check out the Ripple attorney if you want the real in-depth of what an attorney has to say about this. I personally cannot quote on it too much, but let's see it here a little quickly, I guess. Uh, this is about the amended complaint. I don't think that actually anything... No, I'm just quickly seeing, but nothing has actually shifted here. Nothing has said by the attorney here. Or no, there's nothing significant in this article. Okay, I just quickly have to verify. Once more, guys, did you buy the freaking dip? I'm still so excited because our uh, long that we did exactly when I tweeted this out is still going extremely, extremely strong. Again, I got a beautiful position. So you might already understand from my, my previous tweets. Leverage times 20. Um, how much profit will you be in? Like maybe, let's quickly check it out. Mm, 8% maybe? Yeah, you do the math on that one, right? For yourself here for a little bit. So I think the 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 position opened at about forty eight thousand something, forty eight five. I think forty eight point five thousand dollars. No, it was a little bit less than that because I might have actually bought it like two minutes before. However, um, since I did buy a couple of times because I never buy it once, I don't know what the exact position uh, looks like over there. But yeah, about that area, I'm not sure what the percentage of that would be. But you calculate it, right? You calculate what the freaking the uh, money is right there it's crazy though it's it's definitely significant so again that's really amazing really really good day for me i'm really happy then dubai businessman pledged five billion dollars basically bitcoin investment dubai businessman kurham Stroff pledged five billion dollar investment miami 2.0 blockchain strategy could transact 200 billion dollars per day ibc group and burkhan were inspired by the miami mayor's de dedication to blockchain a dubai tycoon kurham Shroff pledged or sorry guys pledged 100,000 bitcoin worth 5 billion towards launching the Miami 2.0 blockchain strategy foundation pretty damn crazy all right but again there's a lot going on in the crypto space right now i still think crypto is not going anywhere for the next couple of months so all this fear is just fear to make you sell in my opinion crypto.com burns 70 billion dollars in crow ahead of mainnet launch in march the crow 70 billion dollars okay potentially i guess Crow.com announced the largest token burn in crypto history today. The project will burn $70 billion in Crow to fully decentralize the ecosystem ahead of the mainnet launch. I just saw a couple of people send me some tweets or send me some um, pictures of their portfolios with some huge gains. And I also saw a couple of people selling all their Crow now for different coins. You know what I think is funny is that Crypto.com did this to actually get a little bit of a market advantage, I think, and maybe to keep themselves afloat during such a big crisis or to keep themselves doing good when things might shift over or to actually propel in a very bullish time. And it kind of did work, you know, because the, the coin is up like crazy, uh, logically so. But the question is, was it worth it in the end for this big burn, right? And, and actually how Crow works in terms of structure, I'm actually not too sure. Right? I cannot even tell you too much about that as I personally am not a holder. But one fun fact is I told all of you one week ago exactly, I just checked, that Crow might be a very good buy. And I'm a little bit sad that I didn't put my money where my mouth is because, well, that would have been pretty damn nice, right, if I bought exactly one week ago. But no, I did not do it myself. So I'm not holding a grudge against you for not doing it either because you cannot know everything. By the way, as I said before, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 80,000. I think we're pretty damn close and I appreciate every single one of you that keeps doing that. Another couple of things I had was XRP, the anti-coin, because, man, it's really decoupled quite far. Go check out Disc, uh, no, TikTok is what it's called. Ah, <sighs> yes, TikTok. And go check out GSX. A link is down below. First gold back coin. Again, I just put some money into it, and that is that. I might lose it all. I might make some huge returns. That is that. Thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you guys again in another crypto video. Uh, yeah.